Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part two of the Fall of Babylon and the Resurrection series. Uh, probably the first few minutes of this is going to be from a previous study, but it's leading to where I'm trying to take this. So, the fall of Babylon. What is Babylon? Well, Babylon was an empire, an ancient empire that collapsed physically. But spiritually, it has existed throughout history. Well, from the time of Babylon to now. Now the Bible alone will tell you who this mystery Babylon is, if you will let it. Now the physical Babylon was destroyed and never to be rebuilt. However, there is a spiritual Babylon which you will find, if you use the Bible alone, is end time Jerusalem. Believe it or not, there are two groups that wish to rebuild the temple. And rebuilding the temple of Solomon, or rather Herod, who is an Edomite, by the way, according to the Jewish historian Josephus, and performing animal sacrifices is a complete and total denial of everything Jesus did on the cross. So, take that with a grain of salt. Now, when I get done reading this, we are going to start in Revelation chapter 17 and go through 18. Possibly 19. I'm not sure. We'll see how long it takes. But in Revelation 18 and verse 21, now we're skipping around a little bit because I want to tell you, uh, well, when I was in college and we had to give a presentation and speech, the instructor, professor, teacher, whatever, always said, tell the people what you're going to tell them, tell them what you're going to tell them, and then summarize what you told them. You know, give them an introduction, do the body of the story, and then recap it. And this is the introduction. So in Revelation 18 and verse 21, we read, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. In Revelation 18.24, And in her, speaking of Babylon, And in her was found the blood of prophets, and of saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth. Now, the saints are always mentioned, to my knowledge, in the New Testament. Not the Old, well, the Old Testament, people become saints. But as far as I know, well, let me make sure of that. Yep, almost gave you false information there. Uh, according to the search options of Bible words, the word saints does appear in the Old Testament. So, I was wrong about that. Uh, 34 times. However, in the New Testament, we read... 61 times. So, hmm. 
In 1 Corinthians 14.33, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Colossians 1.4, Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, and of the love which ye have to all the saints. Hmm. So... Colossians 1.26, Even the mystery which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints. Hmm. So, yeah, it's, uh, looks like, yeah. So what can I tell you? So I guess the only requirement for being a saint is their belief in the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his only begotten son, who is Jesus, who is the Christ. So in Revelation 18, 24, and in her, Babylon, was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. So Babylon was responsible for the blood of the prophets. Hmm, that should tell you right there. It cannot possibly be Rome, the United States, or anywhere else. Can't be. When did the prophets die in the United States, New York City, or Rome? They didn't. So let's keep going and we will nail this down. Revelation 16, 6. For they, Babylon, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou, the God, thou, God, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Revelation 6, 17 and verse 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. So Mystery Babylon killed the prophets. Revelation 17 and verse 5. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Revelation 17.6. Now we're going to read all this again, but I'm just giving you a quick overview. This is the introduction. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, with the blood of the martyrs. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration 17.9, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Now, everybody points to Rome, but Jerusalem is also on seven hills or seven mountains. That's why it always says, let us go up to Jerusalem. Revelation 17 and verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues, languages. Verse 18. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Now, let me tell you something. And then people will say, Ah, oh, well, you know, when does Jerusalem ever rule the whole earth? Is the Bible, book of Revelation, a book of the past, the present, or the future? I think this part is referring to the future. Now think about it. When they build a temple, and the Antichrist comes, and there, there's a one-world religion 
worship of the beast, a one-world economic system, the mark of the beast, 666, can't buy or sell unless you have the thing in your forehead or in your right hand, and a one-world government ruled by the beast. And where is this beast going to rule from? The temple. He's going to proclaim himself to be God, sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Didn't we read that in a previous study? Oh, yeah. So this kingdom of the beast is going to be economic, it's going to be religious, and it's going to be the civil ruling government. It's going to be all packaged in one. And it's for the future. And if you want to know who is wanting to uh, build the temple in Jerusalem, and that's what all this war is all going, going on in the Middle East. Now, as of today is November 17, 2024, you wait and see, there will be a war with Iran, I'm pretty sure. I don't claim to be a prophet, but it looks like there will be. And that will be the end of any Muslim opposition to the temple. But there are two so-called Jewish groups that want to build the temple. There's a group called the Temple Mount Faithful and the Temple Institute. Look them up. They got websites. Now, where were the prophets killed? How about we talk to Jesus? Well, or rather have Jesus talk to us. In Luke 13.33, Jesus speaking says, Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following. For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Remember, Babylon killed the prophets. Remember, Babylon killed the prophets. Jesus says, For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Wow. Wow. But Jesus, you got it all wrong. We're talking about New York City or Rome. I don't think so, people. See, the liars, uh, not, I'm not talking about people laying on the ground. I'm talking about people that deceive liars. They'll mix a lot of truth with a lie. Just remember, people, Rat poison is only a little bit of poison mixed in with food. How about Jesus in Matthew 23, 37? Jesus speaking, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. Huh. Oh, Jesus, you got it wrong. You're supposed to say, O Rome, Rome, thou that killest the prophets. No. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. And stonest them which are sent unto thee. When did the Lord ever send prophets to Rome, the Vatican? When did he ever send prophets to New York City or anywhere else? The answer is never. Jesus says, How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Hmm. Judaism is desolate. No fruit. It's like a desert. There's a lot of sand, but nothing grows there. No good fruit. The two end-time witnesses of God are mentioned in Revelation 11.8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Was Jesus crucified in New York City? No. Was he crucified in the United States? No. How about was he crucified in Rome? No. The Bible records that Pilate tried to release Jesus. 
So you can't say, well, he was crucified by Rome. No. The Bible tells you who crucified Jesus. And it wasn't Pilate. He might have carried out the sentence, but the Bible tells you it was a group of religious people. So Jesus, my Lord, was crucified in Jerusalem, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Not Rome, not Mecca, not in the United States. So are you going to believe Jesus or commentaries by deceivers? Hey, how about Paul? Why don't we take a look at Paul? Now, there's a great movement underway to discredit Paul as an apostle. You know why? Very simple. It's right here. Well, of course, these same people will tell you, oh, well, Babylon is not Jerusalem, and it's really Rome, and Rome killed Jesus. Oh, really? You want to know why they hate Paul? The Judaizers. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, in verses 14 through 16, we read the following. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets. Let's read that again. For ye have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who, the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles, or nations, that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway, for the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Who forbid Peter and the other apostles in the book of Acts to forbid uh, the speaking of the name of Jesus in the temple? It wasn't the Romans. No, it wasn't the Romans. So, can anybody show me from the Bible alone where Rome or Islam kill the prophets or America or New York City? Yeah, I know. I am very familiar with the history of Rome. I've read Fox's Book of Martyrs. But guess who infiltrated Rome? Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't the Muslims. Did you know that Tomas de Torquemada, uh, he was the head of the Spanish Inquisition in, well, Spain, the Inquisition, you've heard of the Inquisition, where they murdered Christians? Guess what? He was a convert. I wonder what uh, synagogue his parents attended. Yeah. Yeah, he was a, conver a convert from the synagogue to the Catholic Church. And he's the one that put Christians to death. Of course, they blame it on the Catholics, but you get the idea. Matthew 23, 37. Now remember, people, I am on BitChute, I am on Odyssey, and I am on Rumble. One day, uh, this platform, you know who, will uh, delete my channel. And when they do, I'm going to take that as my cue from the Lord. That's it for social media. Done. So, if you want a copy of my work, write me an email. PalmBeachWeddings at gmail.com And if that doesn't work, you could write ChaplainBob at uh, ProtonMail.com Yeah. So, or you can go to Odyssey or Rumble or BitChute. Because one day, it's going to be gone. And that's it. I made a deal with the Lord. As long as I'm on tube, I will continue to put out studies. But once that's gone, 
I'm going to take that as a sign that time to do something different. So if you want a copy of all my work, go for it. Matthew 23, 34, Jesus speaking. Who is he talking to here? He's not talking to the Romans, okay? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel. Who killed Abel? Cain. Cain did. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one. And everybody that tells you that Adam fathered Cain is telling you that Adam is the wicked one. And I don't think Adam is the wicked one. But Jacob can believe that if they want. That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias and of Archias. And I think, I think this was uh, John the Baptist's father, if I remember correctly. From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barchias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Wow. Matthew 23, 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Revelation 18, 24. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth. So Babylon was responsible for the blood of the prophets. Yeah, I know, it's getting tedious, but there are people that will argue and say, oh no, this is Rome, or this is the United States. You know, you ought to rebuke these people sharply. I mean, really. Luke 13, 33, Nevertheless, I, Jesus, must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Now, this is a comment I copied from somebody. They write, I dedicated a lot of time and prayed to God to show me who Mystery Babylon is. Here are more verses. God was never married to the USA, Rome, etc. The Bible does not have any evidence those places are Mystery Babylon. But it does tell you who is. The great city is used 10 times in the book of Revelation, and every time it is speaking about Jerusalem. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Revelation 16, 19. The above verse distinguishes between the nations from the those that claim to be Jews. There are, two par there are two parties, not three in that verse, the nations and Jerusalem, Babylon. Merchandise. Mystery Babylon is making the kings of the earth rich because she is buying their merchandise. Uh, Bob's note here. Who controls the banking system? Think about it. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. Revelation 18, 15. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Revelation 18, 3. So these specific items below are sold to Mystery Babylon by the kings. The merchandise of gold, 
silver, precious stones and pearls, and fine linen, purple and silk and scarlet, and all fine wood, and all manner of vessels of ivory, and all manner of vessels of most precious wood, and of brass and iron and marble. Now, guess what? If you want to read what is going into the temple, you can read, I believe this is Solomon speaking, in 1 Chronicles 29 and verse 2. Now I, no, I'm sorry, I think this is King David preparing for Solomon. Well, if you want to, read 1 Chronicles 29. But this is verse 2. Now I have prepared with all my might for the house of my God the gold for things to be made of gold and the silver for things made of silver and the brass of, for things of brass, the iron for things of iron and wood for things of wood. Onyx stones and stones to be set, you know, gemstones, right? Glistering stones and of divers colors and all manner of precious stones and marble stones in abundance. I mean, that tells you what the, the, the temple is going to be filled with. And then in Revelation 18, 12, interestingly, the items Mystery Babylon is buying are all items needed to reinstate the temple and sacrifice system. They are also items the Antichrist will use. See Daniel 11, 37 through 38. Please do research on items in the Old Testament used in the temple if you're really interested but i don't want to make this in a, a five-hour study so i mean the book of leviticus goes into detail on a lot of this maybe not the temple but the tabernacle which re which was uh before the temple the temple replaced the tabernacle tabernacle was movable the temple was not so much right so Jerusalem in the Millennial Kingdom. How can Jerusalem be destroyed and be in the Millennial Kingdom? The layout of the Millennial Kingdom is in the last nine chapters of the book of Ezekiel. The Jerusalem in the Millennial Reign is not the, in the same exact place. And what really debunks that is the Millennial Jerusalem is nine times larger than modern day Jerusalem. The Millennial, the millennial Jerusalem has two rivers flowing out out of its east and west side something modern-day Jerusalem does not have remember in the temple of God uh, in Revelation there's rivers of water that flowed east and west from the east and west yeah biblically it is a different place altogether and finally um, well, he quotes the second and third chapters of the book of Revelation, uh, verses 9. And uh, I'm trying to keep the channel up as much as possible and trying to avoid the uh, word association. So, there you go. All right, so with that in mind, let's go to... The book of Revelation. All right, let's read Revelation 16, verse 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which had worshipped his image. Now, I'm not sure how true this is, but um, if they use lithium as a power source for this mark, if that's what it is, whatever, uh, if these, if the mark was contained like a kind of a capsule and had lithium in it, from what I understand, lithium causes a Grievous sore would cause a grievous sore upon people. I don't know if, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm not saying it's true. Verse 3. 
And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. Wow. Uh, can you imagine that? Everything in the sea dying? And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Hmm. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto unto him to scorch men with fire. Well, it sounds like global warming, don't it? Yeah. And the men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pain, pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. See, God wants us to repent of our wickedness, people. Verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs, frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Huh. Did you know Egypt had a frog god? I think his name was KK, K-E-K-E. -E. Uh, have you ever seen the so-called right wing symbol, the frog? I think it was what, Pepe? P-E-P-E, -P -E, Pepe the Frog. Why did they pick a frog? I wonder. Hmm, just a coincidence, right? And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Uh, are we talking about garments made out of linen and cotton? Or are we talking about white robes washed in the blood of Christ? I think it's the white robes washed in the blood of Christ, but, you know, spiritual nakedness, right? Verse 16, And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. Now, why would they say, oh, this is in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon? Because the New Testament was written in Greek, but it's going to use a Hebrew word here, and that tells you, Armageddon is a Hebrew name because the New Testament was written in Greek. And the Hebrew roots liars will tell you that the New Testament was originally written in Hebrew, but then mistranslated by those horrible anti-Semitic Greeks. No. Wrong. Wrong. In Matthew 21.43... Guess who Jesus is speaking to here? And it's not the Romans. Jesus said, Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Which is why the New Testament was written in Greek and not Hebrew. And who wrote all those New Testament books in Greek to Greek cities in Greece. You know, Colossae, Colossians, Thessalonica, 
Thessalonians, uh, you know, Ephesus, Ephesians. Oh, now you know why they don't like Paul. Because they don't want you to believe that. They, that's why they tell you, oh, Paul was a false apostle. Don't believe that garbage. I mean, you know, really, when you throw away all of Paul's writings and 2 Peter and the book of Acts, because Acts records the conversion of Paul, and I mean, it's just, uh, you know, you're left with almost nothing. And that's what they want. So they'll tell you, oh, Paul was a false apostle. No, he wasn't. They're liars or they're deceived which is a shame, but it happens. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. See, there'd be no reason to say in the Hebrew tongue if this was originally written in Hebrew, because everybody would know if they could read Hebrew. No, it was written in Greek, and that's why they use the name Armageddon. 17. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. Whoa. Do you know that every major city in the United States is built on a fault line? Oh, yeah. I remember when I was in elementary school, they said New York City was not built on a fault line. That's why they were able to build, you know, they had a granite foundation for a uh, uh, bedrock granite. That's why they could build those huge skyscrapers. Well, satellite imagery has revealed... New York City is on a fault line. You know, granite is some pretty tough stones. And, uh, you know, instead of arguing over the shape of the earth, I wish we would argue over what kind of stones to use to uh, carry out capital punishment against a certain groups of people. So, uh, yeah, but we don't want to do that. No, we'd rather argue over the shape of the earth. You know, oh, it's flat. Ugh. Meanwhile, the evil ones are grooming your, your children. Yeah. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup, the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. Do you realize the mountains are going to be knocked flat, and the islands fled away? Does that mean that they're going to disappear under the water? Wow. That's what I, that's, that's how I look at it. Verse 21. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. From what I understand, a talent is about 70 pounds or about 30 kilograms, 30 kilos. Can you imagine a, a 30 kilo rock falling from heaven, hitting you in the head? You're not going to live long. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. See, people, all these plagues in Revelation are, well, maybe not all of them, but some of them are very similar to uh, the plagues of Egypt in the book of Exodus with Moses. So... Revelation 17, verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, 
with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of our fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Uh, and the woman was arrayed in purple. Now purple has always been the color of royalty from ancient times unto now. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. All right, let us go to Jeremiah chapter 51, Old Testament. Jeremiah was the prophet that foresaw the destruction of Jerusalem and the rise of Babylon. Jeremiah 51, 1. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. And I will uh, and will send unto Babylon fanners. Uh, what do you mean a fanner? Well, what do you do when there's a fire? You fan the fire. You give it more oxygen so it can burn, right? And will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble, they shall be against her round about. Against him that bendeth, let the archer bend his bow. And against him that lifteth, lifteth himself up in his brigadine and spare ye not her young men destroy ye utterly all her host a host is like an army thus the slain shall fall in the land of the chaldeans uh Chal chaldee was part of babylon and they that are thrust through in her streets well what do you do with a sword you thrust it through them right verse 5 for Israel hath not been forsaken. Now remember, this is the book of Daniel is uh, said in this in this uh, time period, in this exact place. Daniel grew up in Babylon. He was a prince of Judah. For Israel hath not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God of the Lord of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Flee, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Remember the New Testament says, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her plagues. Come out of Babylon, people. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render under her a recompense. Payback. Verse 7. Listen to this carefully. We're going back to Revelation in a minute. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Mad, not angry, but crazy, insane. Let's read that again. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand. You see, the Lord used Babylon to punish wicked Jerusalem and Judah took them into captivity. Well, the ones that didn't die in the war. So Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand and that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Howl for her. Take balm for her pain. If so be, she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. 
Forsake her and let us go, everyone, into his own country, for her judgment reacheth unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. The Lord hath brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Now remember something. Persia, the Medes and the Persians, which is modern-day Iran, uh, destroyed Babylon and they allowed what well, the remnant of Judah to return to Jerusalem to rebuild it. You could read about this under uh, the books of Ezra and Nehemiah. I think Ezra was the priest and Nehemiah was the king, if I remember correctly, but you can read about them. All right, let's go back to Revelation 17. Let's start from the beginning. Verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk, drunk with the wine of our fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy and having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand. Didn't we read that the golden cup of Babylon was in the Lord's hand? But this woman, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. Judas Iscariot was called the son of, a son of perdition. It means to fall. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they beheld the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. And here is the mind that hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings... Five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. Now, I don't know. I'm just throwing this out there. This is kind of a guess, so don't take it literally. I'm wondering if the seven kings are the five kingdoms that fell before Rome, and the one that is during the time of John when he wrote the book of Revelation uh, is Rome and the five before that were you know could have been Babylon Persia uh, Greece uh, Assyria I don't know but we read five are fallen and one is and the other is not yet come and when he cometh he must continue a short space and the beast that was and is not yet he is the eighth and is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. Now remember, the beast had ten horns. Remember that. Verse 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. Revelation 17 and verse 13. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. 
These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So if you ask me, the saints are the ones that are called, chosen, and faithful, not the Antichrist over in the Middle East. But hey, that's my opinion. Verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth, now remember, the beast rose up out of the sea, people. The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns, the kings, which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. The great city. Which city is that? Wow. All right. This is the end of Revelation chapter 17. And we've almost gone an hour. So maybe I will. This is part two. Of the fall of Babylon. So I guess there's going to be a part three. So. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.